plenty of sunlight and play and a due portion of the milk of human kindness makes children grow into healthy, well-balanced, efficient citizens. Okay. Um, I thought one of the really powerful things in the film is how you illustrate through the interviews that there's this power dynamic that's going on when women's bodies are policed. And that was something that really struck me, and I, I think it's something that really, like, most women can relate to and it's something that even though I'm somebody who was raised by like a really feminist mother and like you know go to a really liberal college and stuff like that like it's something you kind of keep realizing you know more and more as you go along in, in life was that an experience you had with the film or well it's been profound to realize the learned shame of the breasts and like where does that come from and why is that so persistent and how is that so ferociously reinforced mm -hmm. I mean those are big questions that I think we all need to look at and yet the answers don't come so easily I think because it has such a depth culturally and I think it is linked to monotheism and religion and religious mores and morals and the culture of our civilization is really founded upon those moors, and so we've kind of just been swept up into that current. It's, it's the time has come to look at the the side effects of those moors. Those moors have been great for men on battlefields and for maybe the banking industry and for trade and for freight and for all the things around taking and then dispersing for a profit. And anyway, I don't want to get off on too much of what all of patriarchy looks like in the man's world, etc. But somewhere in there, the female body giving birth, nursing, bleeding, changing, has become um, something that became frowned upon. So even just that passage from adolescence, you know, when you get your period, there's this veil that comes down. And you know, someone said to me recently, you can always tell once a girl gets her period because she has that sullen look. And now I look for it all the time and I see it. There's this sullen look. And it's like now she's kind of on her own. She's isolated inside of all these profound changes no one in the culture is saying, hooray for you, you're different than your girlfriend and that's fine and you're perfect the way you are. No one is probably saying that to her in the culture. If she's lucky, like you had a feminist mom who was a big communicator, but a lot of us aren't that lucky and I think our mothers are doing the very best they can, but it depends on how they were mothered and how safe they feel. I think a lot of moms don't want to rock the boat and make their girls too bold because then the girls might be disadvantaged and moms are protective of their children and they will do anything. You know, the mother bear phenomena comes comes out for very ferociously. So moms, in a way, inadvertently reinforce these mores. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think about that a lot with sort of, I mean, you talk about in like, you know, feminist theory, like internalized misogyny type thing. And it's not, it's not conscious, but it's, it really is everywhere. I mean, I remember being like teased in middle school by like boys and kind of looking to other girls for help. Like, you don't think that's right, right? And they'd be like, no, no, like they're, they're right. They know what they're talking about. I mean, it's, it's like shocking, like such a young age, girls like kind of trained to like put themselves down. It's, it's true. It's scary. <laughs> it's true. It's very scary. Boys get an advantage at a critical time. They learn to, you know, boys will be boys. Mm -hmm. You know, oh, he had a wet dream. Oh, the oh, he has a woody. You know, there's all these euphemisms for the emerging sensual persona that's emerging for boys. That gives them so much confidence. Absolutely. It gives them so much vitality. And they're showing off and being, you know, dynamically expressed. They raise their hand in the classroom. And I think there's something to be said for the power that comes from our own sensuality, that the boys get to take advantage, but that yeah, we don't. Definitely. So it becomes a handicap for girls because here we are covering our breasts, stuffing up our, our periods with brands, you know, are you a Playtex person? Are you a Tampax person? It's like, that's the question. It's not like, how are you managing your flow? What does your flow feel like? It's like, I don't know, we've just been 
taught to relate to that flow through products. Definitely. And through how to sort of cover it up or manage it rather than manage what's, it. what's happening with my body. Yep, kind of cover thing. and manage it and, and do so alone. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you the truth, Abigail, because I had a very heavy period and because my breasts were large, this, they were the second largest in my sixth grade class. I was having a sort of a low grade trauma without realizing it. You had pimples, you had discharge that I didn't understand. You have now here comes the body odor and the, the greasy hair and, and suddenly I'm this smelly thing. Believe me, I was, I was very popular, I was athletic, I was pretty well socially adjusted, but I was having a low grade trauma around managing the blood managing the breasts, managing the new interest in my body by boys who I'd grown up with, who I was now relating with on a different level. So there wasn't really support for that kind of experience. Mm -hmm. And it surprises me that there wasn't more yeah. support. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and going back to what you were saying about boys, like some of that stuff you're talking about, like going through adolescence and having body odor and having that kind of thing, you know, it's it's really normalized with boys. It's kind of like, right. oh, that's what happens. But right. with girls, it's like, oh, you know, it's like, there's right. a lot of anxiety around that for girls, I think. Right, and then just, I mean, I would be remiss if I didn't throw in the whole masturbation thing. Boys are like, yeah, hey, jacked off, yeah, and the guy's like, yeah. And girls, I mean, if you even sort of, even kind of make even a murmur about masturbation, particularly in seventh and eighth grade, freshman year you are damned <laughs> You're, it's like yeah. I mean I didn't even know what that was yeah. until I was 21 and I had a boyfriend who you know was who asked me about it and I was like what are you talking about and of course he was so shocked yeah I think that's it's so, it's so true it's a complete taboo which is yeah crazy and I think I think boys coming of age adolescent boys they're, I mean, boys are taught so young to like, kind of measure their own self worth or their own masculinity by like, how can I like police a woman or how can I like, you know, uh, put put a girl down or say like, oh, this is how you have to be to please me or whatever. It's amazing, I, yeah, how that's persisted. Definitely. But you know, so the boys are victims in all of this too. Absolutely, they're, they're victims yeah. because they learn just as we learn to disconnect from our bodies. They learn to disconnect from their emotions and their hearts. Definitely. And that, of course, is a double whammy for girls who are all about emotions and heart-based experiences really from the get-go. I mean, we're playing with dolls, we're babying, we're, you know, we love our flowers, we love our poetry. I mean, that's just being a girl. Yeah. And so now here are our compatriots, these young boys who are our best friends in a mm -hmm. lot of cases, who are now learning to disconnect from their emotional centers, from their hearts, and therefore our emotional centers. And then that's a terrible tragedy for them. Absolutely. And I don't think it becomes clear for them until later, but society arrests that void by filling it with football, filling mm -hmm. it with mm -hmm. competition and with contexts that distract them from this thing that's happening. It's a very fragile yeah. corridor and it's a chapter in our lives that's worth analyzing and I think we really have to support girls more actively. Definitely.